So, uh, time's come for me. I've been using the carbide tools I made. This is the circular cutter for some time now, and I think I understand their role in my turning. And I disagree with anybody who says that these aren't useful at all stages of turning. They make good, quick roughers. Um, you can do some slightly sophisticated stuff with them, I find, but I tend to go back to traditional tools for final finish. And I do like to like a bowl gouge. But for hollowing, I think these are perfect. And this is what I'm setting up to do, is make myself a nice hollowing tool. So what have I got? Long piece of timber for the handle. I want good control this time, so I've gone longer. Hopefully give me more stability my side of the pivot. Uh, longer steel bar, which is actually also a couple of mil bigger. I think we've gone from 10 to 12 mil bar. Uh, as a result, I'm going to have to shape the end of this down, which you'll see we've put through the process. So that was a few quid off eBay. Um, small carbide cutter. We're actually selling these now through our shop. Um, so if you fancy having a go at this project and want to find none of those, we'll send you one of those for a small fee. Uh, we've got a bolt that suits it, snugs up nicely. I will check out, because I meant to do it before the video, I will check out what size that actually is um, and put it up in the video. Ooh, that now. And here's the ferrule, which is actually a bit of steel in this case. It looks sort of bronzy, but uh, it's just off a, a curtain rail from a shower. So yeah, hmm, not sure, might replace that with something better. And that's the basic tools. Whole total cost, maybe £10. So a bit of a bargain. Anyway, off we set and we'll see where we get to. So the first thing I need to do is find the centre on these. I'll sure do the centre finder. Homemade of course. So there we are, we've got the rough vanilla in the target and then what I like to do is use one of these uh, which is a, an automatic centre punch. This is ash, it tends to be a bit hard uh, and that gives us a centre I can put on the machine. Rinse and repeat. Right, now to get it mounted. So this is the end I want to actually mount the tool steel into, uh, which I'm putting towards the tail stock, centering all these marks we made. And there you go. Change out for the long rest. We've got a fair bit of carving now to do at some point. Right, so what I really need to do is get this now locked in uh, as best I can. Um, but what I'm going to do is round both ends so they fit properly into these jaws so I can get a good solid grip on them and then I'll see how I'm getting on. This can be a turn between centres but I prefer to use jaws. I find them just a bit more secure and trustworthy especially on a, a long turn like this. Uh, but if you haven't got jaws then yeah, turning between centres is perfectly viable. Again, carboy cutter used around it. Um, I like them for this kind of work. Very neat, very sharp. Now, hopefully, we'll get a proper grip this time, or a more proper grip. I might even go a bit braver on the diameter. I think those jaws a bit more closed up. Fingers crossed. There you go. Pretty well, perfectly onto the centre mark. Yes, yeah, my starter problems are back.
probably been a bit conservative, but that's a good grip now. And there you go, instantly, almost perfectly on the centre line. I'm going to go for the big chuck key. Really tighten that up this time. So hopefully that's now held in position. So what I'm going to do is change over. Now this, uh, as I said, there's a number of ways you can drill the centre. And I've, uh, in some of my previous videos, not had a lot of luck. So uh, what's helped me, or certainly I've found it helped me, are these. The centering drills, basically. And their job is to create a centred hole. Um, they're very rigid, because obviously they're quite thick. Uh, they don't tend to bend, so you get a nice starting hole, which means you can drill on accurately and confidently from there. So I'm going to stick that in the chuck. Hopefully I've got enough to room to mount that. There we go. And then I'm going to lock that down good and tight. And we're going to rely on the uh, quill. So let's so see what happens. I do actually want this down at a fairly slow pace. Drilling is better done slow apparently. I'm certainly I'm, well, I guess that's the truth. I'm just going to keep that pinched up a little. And I'm just going to gently wind in. And we'll take it to the point that the countersink is actually starting to engage. I'm going to be using quite a wide drill bit for this. Uh, it would help to use the chuck D, wouldn't it? Back to a halt. Always pays to tighten your chuck up properly. I've got a 13 mil bit from my drill bit set, and I'm going to go with that. Let's see how we get on. So, hopefully, because I have centre drilled this, even if we go off a little bit off target to start off with, uh, it'll be pulled into line. There's hopefully enough movement in that system. Let's see how we get on. Right, I really want to get probably about 12 to 15 centimetres into this handle so there's a good overlap, it's good and strong. As a tool, the potential for this getting a catch inside a piece is quite high. So I'm at 11 there. What I'm going to do is cheat this drill bit out as far as I can to get the maximum length. Oh, that's warm and tight. So I'm just going to bring it forward, which we've got. That's okay. I'm going to go so just keeping a little bit in the tailstock, a little bit in the, the jaws. Let's introduce that. So I'm going to gain, I'm going to get about 13 with our look of things. So that's got to be worth a try. There we have a hole. I'm just going to neaten up this lip because I'm going to catch myself on it if I'm not careful. So I'm just going to put my cone centre back in. Lock it in. The big things I could do with knowing if that hole's the right size. So I think I'm going to do some test fitting with the bar. Uh, I'm feeling we might have to just try and widen that hole out a little bit. It's only one mil broader than the bar is across and I have to say I'm not sure that's going to be enough to get it to ram in from my previous experiences although I want the bar to fit very well and this is being rammed in folks don't comment below I am just going to hammer this home in a sort of traditional tile with a ferrule around it to stop it cracking apart I'm not cutting it in half and routing pre I know a few of you suggested that last time but uh, I want a one piece tool that feels sort of traditional in, in its stylings if that's not for you Please do it your own way. That's probably a good point to talk about. One of the weaknesses, I think, of this as a roughing tool, um, it's very hard to get a straight line, a flat line, because the, there's nothing for no bevel as such to push again. The bevel will be back there. You'd have to be using it like that as a cutter, which I've not tried because I can really feel I'm dragging the blade against the back of that. This is when I tend to prefer the more traditional roughing tool. Although I could go to a bowl, gou a bowl gouge, various other tools at the moment would step in quite nicely and give me a flat edge. This is a finishing tool, it's surprisingly good. Well, let me show you. I'm just going to turn the light on, it's getting a bit dark. So hopefully, um, the camera's picking that up, let me just zoom you in a bit. Okay, I think you can possibly just make out, but this is the error I did with a rounded scraper and it's quite 
furry and rough. This is the cut I just did with the more traditional roughing gouge and actually running it on its bevel and making that cut. Keeping the blade source at roughly 45 degrees. You can get a really nice finish. You can see there, hopefully, the difference in the two surfaces. That is lovely. That's almost, you know, sandable finish. This is still way off. So this is one of the reasons I do like the more traditional tools as well. Everything has a place. Now I want to start shaping that. The first thing I need to do is get the ferrule on. Now, I've rushed this fit in the past and regretted it, so I'm going to take this fairly slow. Um, I know that I've got a groove that just there. Let me get some light round for you. I've got a groove mark just there, which is pretty well right. I just need to be shy of it because I've got to get a good fit. And I'm going to sneak up on this fit as slowly and carefully as possible. something splinter there. Uh, that's that weakness in the wood I was trying to avoid. I may have to epoxy this section as I put the ferrule on just on the safe side. We'll see how we go. Right, I think I'm going to play it safe and just epoxy that into place. Uh, the fit's a little loose and I'd like and that chip being missing doesn't fill me with confidence and I've got another crack there so I think just giving it a good old epoxy would be a good idea. It's very cold out here today so I'm going to give this more than five minutes to dry. Um, try and give it a good time to set up. So let's try and apply most of the epoxy to where I've got the problem. These kind of things happen, and knowing how to fix problems is uh, more important than avoiding the problem in the first place. Uh, as I've heard others said, the difference between a master craftsman, and believe me, I'm not claiming that, uh, and an amateur is a master craftsman knows how to fix his mistakes. Um, and although I'm blaming the wood for this one, I tell you, um, I sort of agree with that sentiment. Again, not calling myself a master craftsman. Right, let's see if we can get this to fit. Just roll it on, trying to spread the epoxy evenly around inside. And I think that will do. So I'm going to leave that to dry now. Uh, and come back in about 10 or 15 minutes. Let's go and have a cup of coffee, here it is. Our glue has dried. Uh, and we're ready for the fun bits, which is deciding on what shape we want our tool to be. Now obviously you can be as imaginative as you want, as weird as you want. So I found a straightforward wooden handle like this, this is the Sorby one, the longest one I've got off my uh, heavier weight bowl gouge. So we're actually going to go probably similar length to that, um, and same style. The only thing I would prefer to have on this would be a positive stop, so I'm going to actually put a uh, an outside bead on the end just so if my hand does slide down I know that I'm coming to the end of the tool before it slides off. Other than that I think the main thing is to have a good bit of bulk here so I'm going to mark on how deep we drilled for the bar to go in and that section wants to stay as meaty as possible very similar to where the Sorby's done it um, and we'll see what we can do. I've left the drill bit in so I can fairly quickly mark that up so we went to about there. So really this section and I think probably about that much I want to have as fairly bulky. Let's see how we compare it to the Sorby on that. So yes, he's gone, I don't know, maybe there, I don't know how deep in this tool steel goes, but uh, I think I want to go a bit longer than that. So I'm coming back to here, I'm going to make this the sort of the end of the bulky section. Then a sweep in and then a sweep back out at the end. Okay, so back to the old reliable bowl gouge with sort of fingernail grind, partial fingernail, I don't know what you call that. And bring the speed up. Thank <laughs> you. 
you've seen sanding before, I'll not bore you with this bit. It's been sanded down to, well, a ridiculous 320, but um, if you can make a tool, might as well try and make it look vaguely handsome, although I'm not terribly happy with what's going on at the ferrule. Um, I can always peel it off if it really bothers me that much. So, I have one a standard trick I like to use, and it's, put the blade right way around, uh, a spirit sanding sealer or shellac basically. Um, something I want to start investigating, make my own batches up, but for now this liberal stuff works well. So I'm just going to give it a coat or two of that. So it's at least a bit sealed from the from the universe. And I can just top it up as I need to. I even have a shellacking bowl, how sad is that? I was trying to work out the other day how many coats of shellac this thing had had on it, and unfortunately it's probably hundreds now. I would have thought it'd be shiny as anything, but uh, actually of course. I never polish the damn thing, so it just gets endless shellacking. The wood I probably forgot to mention, I believe, is sycamore. Um, from a, my father-in-law's back garden, I'm going to chop the tree of his down and some timber I've had for a long time now, about seven years. Um, Yes, I think that's, that's a pretty looking handle. I do like the grain on that. Uh, good and straight, so it should be good and strong as well. And as usual, I put way too much shellac on, but never mind. Into the bowl rather than on, you cannot really put too much on. It dries so quickly, this stuff. It's uh, an amazing finish, and it goes with anything else, so there's really very little excuse to not use it. It's not too expensive, you can use it fairly sparingly and it just creates a nice coat after you've sanded which you can then really sand up if you want to I'm not going to bother I don't think I want to keep the <laughs> some texture in it so I can grip the tool this is after all as I keep saying just a tool um, but you've got to have a bit of fun making stuff like this you know what I haven't done is I haven't put my personal markings on uh, I'm going to have to go back and do that it's a good job I had a bit of extra sort of shit that so yes <laughs> cupping the Sorby design slightly but not totally um, I have my own marking system. You can see Sorby use this pair of rings, pair of rings, single one in the middle. Pattern quite a lot. Um, and it appears that other people like to use that. I don't know if it has any wonderful significance, but uh, my pattern is to use three bands at the front and two at the rear. So I think I'm going to stick to that. Let's mark that in. <laughs> All that remains is to part this off and then we can start on the next phase of the project. That's yeah, sort of what I had in mind. Good length of handle. Yeah, happy with that. So here goes, let's see how well this uh, happens. Try a slightly heavier hammer. You know what, that was the mark. I'm going to call that good enough. It's in. Handle hasn't split. Yeah, I'm going to call that a victory. So, within a centimetre of target. Um, again, I always felt the hole was possibly lit on the small side, but uh, no, happy with that. So, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Having hammered the, uh, the metal shaft into the handle uh, with some success, I'm very happy with the way it's turned out. I suddenly remembered about this fella. Um, I can't imagine why I forgot about him at all. It's something I haven't done in the past, but I've watched enough videos of other YouTubers grinding and working with these to, to take down many materials. I've seen Duresta working on a knife which he shaped and honed using a belt sander. Well, so why? I just completely forgot about it. I don't know. Anyway, I've had a bit of a play with it already and I'm much preferring the results. It's much, much quicker to work with. Um, and also because it's a flat plane, um, I can get the shape I want, which is flat for this job. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do the final honing on this. Okay, so home straight now. I've just got to tap and drill for that, drill and tap for that bolt. And I already know I want M4, which means I want the M4 bit and the M4 drill. So I'm just going to try and accurately mark where I want the head to, to be with the automatic centre punch. Thank you. 
Lovely. Okay, and there we go. Pretty central. And finally, we get to actually screw in the tap. Okay, so obviously the screw's massively in the log, I'm over long, I'm just going to cut that down and then do the final shaping. So, that's basically it, I'm just going to give it a last polish up using the sanding disc, get everything ready. But that's basically it, and I think I might just give it a rub down with some 120 grit sandpaper just to give it a bit of a polish up. But yeah, that's basically it, I'm really pleased that it's come out. The tool handle is absolutely straight this time, which is a victory for me. Um, so yeah, how to make your own carbide cutter. Um, and the next project I'm going to show you me using this to do a hollowing project for Valentine's Day. So do stay tuned. Happy with that. See you in the next video.